Two, we're going to go into muscle imbalances in the lumbopelvic hip region. In the last session, we talked about the virtual body and how the brain works. Now we've got to talk about how those muscles work. And, oops, sorry about that. And what I have to do, I have to come in here. And that should take me to there. So, let's talk about how the muscles affect our dynamic movement. Certainly, if we look at the research that's happened over the last 15 to 20 years, there's been an explosion in muscular research and how it affects our dynamic function. From the really, um, in the mid-90s, Punjabi, who looked at neutral zone of the lumbar spine, through to all the wonderful work by Julie Hyde, Paul Hodges, and the group up in Queensland Uni, looking at transverse abdominus and multifidus control for deep stability. Then um, more recent times, if we look at Andre Fleming and in conjunction with Diana Lee, looking at dynamic flit slings and form and force closure of the pelvis. Britt Sturge has done a lot of work on post-pregnancy pelvic pain and how to rehabilitate that. Many of you will have heard of Stuart McGill, a biomechanist, who talks about um, retraining or strength in the, lung, in the spine and pelvis of sporting and finally if you're interested in the hip homelick's done some amazing research looking at rehabilitation of hip and groin injuries and they actually involve a lot of control of the lumbar pelvic region to free up the hips so if we just look at an overview of how the lumbar pelvic hip region works we're looking at the integration of several models if we look at form closure that's getting the bones, the joints, and the ligaments working appropriately. So this is really where manual therapy plays a huge part to get optimal mobility in those joints. And if you've got frank instability, you may need, you may need intervention to improve structural stability. And that may even be where surgery comes into it with a limited number of people. Then what we're going to talk about today is really muscles and fascia and how they work to give you effective dynamic control. The first presentation, talking about proprioception, talked a lot about neural recruitment patterns. How does a virtual body pre-program what muscles you're going to use? So you may have great strength, but you may not be recruiting it as you need it. And then finally, again, in, when we talked about the virtual body, we talked about emotions and awareness. If someone's scared to move, they will fall back on that faulty recruitment pattern. So we need to go back and incorporate your emotions with neural control.